Okay, so in this video, we are going to look at uh, DNA and its structure and what it's made from. And we'll talk a bit about its purpose as well. So when we look at DNA or the molecule of inheritance, um, it falls under the, the category of macromolecules called nucleic acids. So if you remember, we have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So nucleic acids are really our DNA and our RNA. So the function of these nucleic acids are to store and transmit hereditary information. Um, these molecules are the primary source of heritable information, like how we inherit our traits from our parents or how we pass our genes on to our offspring. Now, when you really think deeply about this, though, like how is a nucleic acid a storing um, genetic information, right? It's basically in the sequence or the order of the nucleotides. In a slide or two, we'll see the building blocks of DNA are nucleotides with the A, T, C, G uh, bases. And really the order of those bases is what determines our genetics. So these molecules that we pass from parents to offspring or from cell to the next cell after the cell cycle, it's really passing on these genetic um, info or this her heritable information based on the sequence of the DNA. Uh, and so the two categories of nucleic acids are RNA and DNA. And then the structure, they are both polymers or long chains of repeating monomers uh, of nucleotide monomers. But the RNA is single-stranded and the DNA is double-stranded that we'll see in a few slides. So the monomer of both DNA and RNA is the nucleotide. But what I find confusing for students is that the nucleotide or the single building block of DNA and RNA is actually made of three parts. So the nucleotide monomer has a five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogen base. In this uh, picture here, the nitrogen base is thymine or a T. Uh, so here we have our five carbon sugar and it is different depending if it's in DNA or if it's in RNA. So if we compare and contrast they're both five carbon sugars. However, the RNA um, sugar is ribose and the DNA sugar is deoxyribose. And it really comes down to that extra uh, hydroxyl group on the RNA uh, sugar ribose. You can see the DNA one is missing one. So deoxy without that extra oxygen. So really that's the only difference between the two sugars in RNA versus DNA. Uh, the phosphate group is the same for both. It has that, um, which my face is there, but it basically has that negative uh, charge. If you remember the phosphate groups from ATP and ADP uh, and the nitrogen bases. So when we are looking at DNA, there are four different nitro nitrogenous or nitrogen bases. We have thymine, guanine, adenine, and cytosine. Now, when we talk about RNA nucleotides, uh, they actually have a different one called uracil instead of thymine. So uh, when we talk about also the like elements that make up nucleic acid. So uh, we have our C, H, and O from carbon dioxide and water that the plants used, uh, took in during photosynthesis. But we also have nitrogen and phosphorus we find in nucleic acids. So if a plant is building itself out of the elements it has available, it gets the C, H, and O through photosynthesis. Uh, from carbon dioxide and water, but the nitrogen and the phosphorus are gonna come from the soil. And then the plant uh, will take that and uh, build its nucleotides. So C, H, O, N, and P are the five elements that you find in nucleic acids. So if you talk about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, nucleic acids are the only one with the phosphorus. Okay, so let's compare and contrast RNA and DNA. So something that they both have in common is that sugar phosphate backbone. So when we talk about um, DNA and RNA, the outer like rungs, like if you were to climb DNA as a ladder, like your hands would be holding on to the sugars and the phosphates. And we call that the sugar phosphate backbone. It is in both RNA and DNA. And in this picture here, you can see how the RNA is single stranded and the DNA is double stranded. Another thing that they both have in common are these nitrogen bases. 
So in RNA, you can see how the nitrogen base is, it's just one, but in DNA, they form a pair. And we call that a base pair, which we'll see in a few slides. Uh, I'll highlight that again for us. So we have a sugar phosphate backbone, <laughs> sugar phosphate backbone and nitrogen bases uh, that make up those nucleotides. Uh, the other difference is though that in RNA, uh, RNA has the four nitrogen bases, uh, C, G, A, and U. Uracil is only found in, in RNA nucleotides. And in DNA, the four bases are C, G, A, and T. So thymine is only found in DNA. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and summarize in a chart for us things they have in common. Uh, they're both made of nucleotides. They both have five prime and three prime ends that we'll talk about uh, pretty much the rest of this video and my next video on replication. Uh, they both have a sugar phosphate backbone. Now I should also mention, I didn't type it here, but they also have um, adenine, guanine, and cytosine, A, G, and C, and nitrogen bases. Those are found in both. And DNA is double-stranded while RNA is single-stranded. DNA contain, contains thymine while RNA contains uracil. And the sugar in DNA is deoxyribose, whereas the sugar in RNA is ribose. Okay, and DNA, which we'll see here in a bit, is that the two strands in DNA kind of like kind of fascinatingly is that they actually will run in opposite directions and we call that anti-parallel. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how these uh, nucleotides can join together to form a polymer. So remember the nucleotides are the monomer and the polymer is the DNA or the RNA. All right, so if we have a single nucleotide here, this one has the nitrogen base thymine and this is a DNA nucleotide. We know this because it has a T. Um, so when we talk about nucleotides, and DNA. DNA is double-stranded. So if you have one nucleotide, it's going to pair with another nucleotide. So in this case, A and T are going to pair together. Now, how are they attracted to each other is by hydrogen bonds. And so um, here, T has two hydrogen bonds to A. Now we call this pairing a base pair. So if you're ever reading a problem or in a conversation with someone, they talk about base pairs or following base pairing rules, this is what they're talking about. Now, the other two nucleotides, we have guanine, which is the G, and that will base pair with cytosine or C. Now, the difference here, though, is that there's three hydrogen bonds between those two nitrogen bases. So guanine um, hydrogen bonds with cytosine. Now, the way I remember it is that uh, you can think of maybe a T and two hydrogen bonds, like they both two and T for T. Or I used to remember it that the G and the C are both kind of round, like a three. I don't know. Um, okay, if you're an AP bio, though, sometimes that little tricky tidbit does come into play in different contexts of harder questions. So just throwing that out there. All right, so you can see here, though, based on base pairing rules, uh, you have the nucleotides paired together uh, with hydrogen bonds down the center. So if this was a ladder, you would be stepping on these nitrogen bases held together by hydrogen bonds. But what about this, the bond between the sugar and the phosphate, right? So this green and blue sides, we call this the sugar phosphate backbone. And actually, there's covalent bonds there called phosphodiester bonds. Now, when we look at our categories of nucleotides, like how can we uh, group them or um, categorize them? So we have two basic groups of nucleotides. Uh, we have our purines, which are gonna be our guanines and our adenines. And what you can see here is that they have a double ring structure um, versus the pyrimidines, where the pyrimidines have that single ring structure in the nitrogen bases. Now, a little trick I used to use when I was a young teacher to remember which two were purines and which two were pyrimidines is that the words cytosine and thymine both have Ys and pyrimidine has a Y. So if you're asked to memorize that for one reason or another, that's how I always kept it in my memory. Okay, so to summarize this slide, the sugar phosphate backbone is held together by covalent bonds called phosphodiester bonds, and the nitrogen bases are held together by hydrogen bonds. 
Now we also have our two categories of uh, nucleotides, which are or nitrogen bases. We have our purines and our pyrimidines. Um, A and G are purines and C and T are pyrimidines. Okay, so when we talk about DNA, and uh, personally, I think DNA is amazing and rad, uh, but one reason why it's so cool is because if you know one side of the DNA, you can follow base pairing rules to find the other side of the DNA. We say that DNA is complementary. They go, it goes well together. So I know here, if I have a T on one side, then the other nucleotide, the pair will be an A. Always, unless there's a mutation, like a mistake that happens. Uh, guanine will always pair with cytosine. A pairs with T, G pairs with C, C pairs with G. So that's uh, pretty rad. Like that follows, those. that happens in all cells on Earth, every single nucleus or prokaryote circular chromosome. Every single piece of DNA uh, follows these base pairing rules. Now, this is also super important or helpful when we get to uh, the topic of DNA replication. Like, how do we make copies of DNA? We're going to use these base pairing rules to make it happen. Okay, so uh, the other thing we should point out are these five prime and three prime ends. So when we look at a nucleotide, now a nucleotide has um, five carbons in that sugar, the five carbon sugar. So here, we're gonna count the carbons, one, two, three, four, and five. But in reality, we're only worried or gonna focus about the five prime carbon and the three prime carbon. So the five prime carbon is on that phosphate group end, and the three prime carbon is on the hydroxyl end of the sugar. So like in reality, like if you're taking notes as you watch this, stop and pay attention to where the five prime and three prime are. This is now super important from this point on. So when we look at our double helix, it's always important to like identify the three prime and five prime ends. So look at the left side of the screen. And what we see here is at that top end on the right, you have a three prime, which means the other side with the phosphate group is the five prime end. And here, let me move my face over. So when we look at this here, uh, DNA is, if you notice, one side is upside down of the other side. So right here, let me draw on this, right here you can see this phosphate group is the five prime end. And then over here I have that hydroxyl group end of the sugar. So right here is the three prime end of this strand on the left. Now, if down here is a three prime end, then at the top is where you have that five prime end. So uh, let me clear this off. Okay. So when we look at, oops. Okay. So now, <laughs> my face again. When we talk about the two DNA strands, they actually run anti parallel. Uh, to each other. So they run in opposite directions and we call this anti-parallel. Um, so one strand is upside down compared to the other. Okay, uh, so when you are ever asked to, um, like if you're given one side of DNA, like one strand of DNA and you're asked to find its complementary strand, like what is the other half, you would follow base pairing rules. But you notice here that we have the five prime and three prime ends identified and labeled. So that new strand that's gonna be built will start with the three prime end and will follow base pairing rules to the five prime end because they run anti-parallel. So you will never see a five prime and a five prime and a three prime and a three prime on the same ends. Like that won't ever happen. Um, okay. All right, so in growing DNA strands, and RNA strands, the new nucleotide is always added to the three prime end. So this is gonna get tricky when we get into DNA replication. So let me just introduce it to you now. So here I have a nucleotide and you can see this is the three prime end, that bottom like left corner of that five carbon sugar. And as you build like a growing polymer of DNA or RNA, uh, basically, a phosphodiester bond, a covalent bond will occur between the phosphate group and that three carbon sugar. And so you can really only add to that three uh, prime 
um, carbon. And so uh, we will talk more about this though when we um, get into our video on DNA replication. But I just wanted to, uh, the way we talk about this is if this top part is a five prime and down here is the three prime, we really like, if you keep on adding to that three prime end, like you started at the five prime and you built it in this direction. So it's growing, like we draw an arrow like this saying that you're adding to that three prime end. So DNA is built from five prime to three prime. Okay, so good job, that's the end of this video. And if you want uh, to see how DNA is replicated, check out my next video. All right, good job.